Hello. So I'm going to go through how the blog post number four assignment can be done and just give you some ideas to help you through it. Hopefully this helps. Feel free to send me an email or call me up or stop by my office if you have any questions beyond what I'm going to present here. So with the blog post number four, you're going to continue on. Right, so we've already done three blog posts before this. This is the final post for the term. And you're going to keep going with the same decision, big decision you started with, and the markets you've defined already. So this is the structure for what I would say would be blog post number four. Uh, typically the blogs that we see, uh, the blog posts are, are maybe they could be really brief or they could be more involved. And this kind of system that I'm doing here is going to be more of the involved type of blog structure. And so really what we're talking about with this one is we're talking about five paragraphs. Okay, you can look at the rubric of, for grading the blogs as well if you want to take a look at that just to see how they're laid out. But uh, really the, you, to get uh, five paragraphs out there that are, that are well-structured paragraphs are, it's going to get you up to get the most points possible. Anyways, paragraph number one, we're going to talk about our market type. Paragraph number two, who are the producers? Paragraph three, what are the costs to produce? And paragraph four, uh, how is the prof max found? And then paragraph five is conclusion. So let's go ahead and break each of these down really quick. So paragraph one, we're going to define our market. We've already should have kind of done this in the previous blog post, right? In the previous blog post, we should already have defined our market, supply and demand in that market, and we should have defined the elasticity and utility within the market as well. Okay, so now that we've got our market, you know, just basically tell me really quick what your market is, and then we're going to focus in on the supply side of it, right? What is the market type? The market type can be one of these four. So you're going to have to select which of these four is uh, the market that you're dealing with. Paragraph two, once we've defined the market type, now we're going to talk about who are the producers. Uh, are there a lot of them or are there a few? This should already be kind of defined by what type of market it is, right? This helps define the type of market. Uh, how do they compete? Uh, and then how do they enter or exit the market? Is it easy or is it difficult? You know, what does it take? And you can even talk a little bit more about the producers if you want to. Really, we're defining what the suppliers in the market are, who they are, and how, what do they look like. Paragraph three, we're going to talk about the costs. So now that we know who the suppliers are, what the, what the uh, producers look like, we want to know really what, what is their cost structure, right? Because costs are one of the main inputs into supply, right? Really, the backbone of supply is cost. And so what are the fixed costs involved? What are the variable costs and how do they look? What are the entry and exit costs look like? And uh, do economies of scale impact this market, right? They're going to impact pretty much all markets, but how do they impact the market? Uh, they're going to be different from monopolies to, like, say, a perfect competition. Economies of scale are going to look different, right? And then uh, are there any mergers in this market? Are there uh, companies buying other companies or, or doing joint ventures? Those type of things in the market. That will help us define exactly who's in the market and how are they competing and or, and or, and or cooperating. Okay. Um, so paragraph four is where we talk about the questions that we ask about our producers. Uh, how do they maximize their profit? Uh, where is the break-even point for the producers? And uh, when do we shut down? Or even beyond this, when do we... Uh, shut down is kind of in the short term. In the long run, when do we know when do we need to exit or uh, maybe when there's going to be new entrants into the market? And then paragraph five is to wrap everything up and conclude. And then you're done with your final blog post for, uh, for microeconomics. Hopefully this helps. We'll talk to you later. Bye.